forever. Dog. You shouldn't have dropped out of college. I'm in shock right now. Mac. I don't even know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you right Our now. Our son needs to learn about follow through. Our Listener, son I'm to- so sorry. We don't need apologies. We need discipline and we need deadlines. Action. We need we to need see. Action. We need to see the change. You've apologized on every episode for the past six months. And we're back, and it's so weird. Elena has never once worn her hair up ever, and suddenly she's doing it two weeks in a row. I like row. your little tendrils. And Ten- Mac has oh. never had carrot juice before, but oh, seemingly. Oh. Another week, another juice. <laughs> another week, another juice. And Ashley has been sitting, just, I've been in a meditative state, just sitting in this chair in these clothes for a week. Now I smell really bad. You could change your hat. You put the no, other hat No, I on. love when no, you wear that No, the other hat is so cute. No, oh, yeah, I like the other, the other hat. Really I like the color. We're pl- Why are we playing dress up with Ashley right now? <laughs> yeah, change your hat. No, put on the <laughs> yeah, other that hat. That, yeah, that change one, it, change one, it, that one. change it, change it. Put it on. Yes. Yes, change it. Yes, yes. yes. Yay. She's taking it off. Yay. Yay. Okay, put the other hat on. Hey. Woo. Put hat on. Yay. <laughs> Wait, that was actually really nice. Can you guys? I would like for someone to be in my apartment <laughs> yeah. doing that every time I put on clothes. I had fun. I, I seriously don't think anyone would have body dis- dysmorphia if there was someone going, Yay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, uh, yes. Yeah, that shirt. Like yeah. children. That's uh, unconditional love and like a celebration of the things that they do. We sh- we all need more of that. We should put out a track on the Patreon that's just us cheering you on while you get <laughs> yes. forty five minutes. Yeah, change. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Don't worry that you're yeah, late. Yeah, you look so good. <laughs> Sorry, what were you gonna say, Ashley? Have you guys been watching Down for Love? Oh my god! No. Uh, what is that? It's same as um, Love on the Spectrum, but this time oh. with um, people with Down syndrome. Hmm. It close to my heart. I oh my god, I love it. Oh, is it on Netflix? I love it. Or? Yeah, it's so oh, good. No, I haven't even. It's so no, good. I seen it. There's like a lot of this guy. I don't know about this specific season, but I know people were like, oh, love on the spectrum. Yeah, you know, like infantilizing. I, is down for love an appropriate title? <laughs> they, yeah, it's a little. When you said down for love, I know, was like, it can't be what I think I, it is. I actually was thinking that, but then as it goes through, there are a couple actors who have Down syndrome, who, who have Down syndrome, who are in it, who are mm-hmm. also in productions that have puns with the word down, mm-hmm. and so and they seemed like very like See, they yeah. and the way they spoke to each other and used the the word, I was like, oh, this is like from this is actually I think from within Language the community within the and community. yeah yeah. Well, see, and that's where the love on the spectrum. When I watched the show, I loved the sh- like. I was like, "This is the this is beautiful. I, yeah, I, I love it. it so much. I'm so I'm so invested in this. I want more. This is my favorite show of all time." But then the discussion that I see around the show is from people who are in the autism community, people who have autism, who are on the spectrum, and are saying this is infantilizing. This isn't helpful. And so there, I have to be like, "Okay." This is people within the community saying mm-hmm. we don't like this. I've seen this- I've seen both though. And I think I think what's interesting about it is that the show shows people on different places of the spectrum. Totally. Yeah. And I I I you know, obviously I'm not on the spectrum. I mm-hmm. don't know. I'm not in the community. But I think they I think the treatment of the relationships is actually quite well done in that the relationships spoke for themselves. Mm-hmm. And I I don't know that having your heart touched and reacting, being like, oh my God, like that touches my heart is necessarily the same thing as in, infantilization. The, yeah, the and issue I think that the issue that I've seen people having is not the way that the relationships are portrayed, because I would agree with you. I think it does a really, I mean, again, none of us are on the spectrum. Take this all with a grain of salt. I would agree with you that it, f- to me, as an outsider looking in, it feels like it it did, the positives that it did for the community was raising awareness, showing yes. the different people on different places in the spectrum, showing that having autism doesn't mean that you live any lesser of a life or yeah. you can't thrive or feel joy or be in or love. Or have relationship problems. Exactly. That we yes. all have. Yes. 
the the issue that I've seen mostly is with the like the transition scenes between meeting somebody where they do that like this is Bill. Bill likes cars. Interesting. Bill doesn't like loud noises. That's the part that that people are that I see oh. people discussing the most and being like in any other romance show do you have someone saying like that's fair i think that's fair jessica yeah. jessica likes curling her hair she's yeah. afraid of trains that makes sense that it does feel yeah <laughs> i actually do wish that someone would do this for me <laughs> what would I, yours be Wait, i what would yours genuinely be? <laughs> wish that someone would actually do this for other for other romance uh, that is 100 percent correct i yeah. will say they ripped that from amelie What's oh yeah. oh whoa yeah which I is not that, about autism well actually now connection. that i'm thinking about it perhaps. amelie might have autism perhaps but it's not <laughs> stated but they do it about every character who yeah right doesn't necessarily oh. have autism they ripped Ooh. it from amelie which is not interesting about and maybe amelie ripped it it might be just a technique that but huh. yes i agree in the context of the show that's, I think they're correct. Yeah. And then but, I think there was something else But I don't think about... that should take away from the whole show because I do think it, it's, it is so beautiful. It is beautiful. To watch well, people okay. fall let's... in love at all. Yes. And then to do it for a community where romance, because people yeah. desexualize people with disabilities, yeah. I think it's so important that we get to watch them be full romantic sexual people. Yes. So let's, I, I want to throw it to the audience. Listener, write in. Um, if you're on the spectrum or if if um, it's a community that's close to your heart, what do you think? Genuinely, I would love to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, where I, people it, are at with that. And also, could it be the reception? Could the, the, the art itself kind of be unbiased, but the way people react to mm. it and the discourse that forms around it, the viewership is doing the infantilization does that reframe it for you maybe the other piece i was going to say and i don't i don't have i don't know the specifics of it off the top of my head so i don't know that i can speak to it super well but i remember there also being discussion around the music choices and something about how the certain scenes of the yeah. relationships and the scenes of them meeting the music that was chosen is very kind of like again kind of makes it childish it, mm -hmm. it it is telling the audience how to respond yeah. in a way that you wouldn't see on other dating shows mm. those yeah. are the the things that i've seen around but yeah again, yeah very interested listener yeah Can that's interesting because on the one hand yeah i understand that on the other hand like great british bake-off which is not a you know it's not a romance right. so it's not the same but it has a similar kind of feel-good vibe lightness fe a yeah, lightness right. mm -hmm. like are they just trying to bring a lightness to True. a topic that like you know they i don't i don't i think making it too serious could potentially you know take viewers away from it you know what i mean yeah. they're going for a certain tone very interesting very interesting yeah. um <laughs> but anyway I, um, here are my di likes and dislikes. Yeah, tell us what yours are. Ashley likes calling pieces people pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. Ashley doesn't like the beep boops. <laughs> Ashley doesn't <laughs> like beep boop. <laughs> Ashley likes hats. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley doesn't like trying on new pants. <laughs> <laughs> This is hilarious. <laughs> Mac likes carrot juice. Carrot juice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mac doesn't like people who drink milk with dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, you are nailing the voice. Avail I'm nailing the voice. Elena, Elena likes boulder program. Of thesis pro <laughs> Elena doesn't like checking her phone in the morning. <laughs> Okay, okay. Speak hi, everybody. I'm Elena. I'm your mom. This is I, the Chosen Family Podcast. I'm Ashley Gavin, and I am her father. <laughs> I'm Mac Injimi, and I'm your hot teenage brother. Baby. Baby. Mac, we can infantilize. She can Mac, sense. we can totally infantilize. She, she consents to it. Infantilization right? is hard. I, I, I get have... to decide that because you're an infant, so I consent <laughs> for you. <laughs> I have That's a clip where I talk to two autistic people in the clip 
and people um, kind of uh, accused me of infantilization because one of the people in the clip was this sweet, sweet 18-year-old in the audience who was clearly the youngest person in the audience and very Mm -hmm. shy but wanted to talk to me. And a lot of people, uh, there was a lot of good and bad comments on this, and that's part of why I posted it. I knew that people would actually comment more on it and he is here's the secret sometimes we know what we're doing with that Mm -hmm. uh but uh this person had a really positive experience and wrote in the comments oh my god i love this just so everyone knows like oh i love this interaction so much like thank you i was so glad to be a part of the show like just it's in there um but people accused me of infantilization when i was just really reacting to their spirit Mm. Um, and then there was another autistic person in the audience who I treated totally differently because I was reacting to their spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, I think sometimes that's, that's what makes art so hard, right? Is that we sometimes put our own lens onto these things and Mm -hmm. we, we see it true to our experience and, and yada, yada, yada. But I, yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to be, uh, I gotta say infantilize me. (laughs) I want to see some comments infantilizing me. Yeah, I feel like Ashley wants to be baby. You. No, exactly. What is Ashley like? That's what being it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley likes Sometimes being people want to be baby and you can read that on them and let me yeah. be baby. Let everyone be baby for once. Let them be baby if they want to be baby. Yeah. Well, I get that too with um my the reacting to lesbian thirst traps on TikTok series that I do. Um which shout out Jade Fox. She's the originator. Of, she created the series and I am just riding on her coattails um but i get comments like that sometimes when i because i don't like to react to or like thirst over probably people under like 21 even around 21 i'm like oh you're little but so sometimes i get comments of people being like you're infantilizing these creators like they are 18 19 20 whatever whatever age they are they're choosing to put these videos out there they're choosing to like sexualize themselves don't take away someone's sexuality just because they're young and i'm like yeah i i I get that that they are a sexual being and i hope they own that i am happy for them like but it makes you uncomfortable personally i'm like i don't want to be the one yeah. I am not comfortable sexualizing this person. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't be a sexual being and yes. like live that fully. You're still giving them the representation in the video. And right. anyone I, who wants to thirst to. over them can. That's but right. you, you you don't want to at that particular moment. Yeah. So stop with the beep boops. Yeah, stop with the beep boops. No, they're, no one's ever like... like yeah, because you're perfect in every way, you real. piece of shit. You lovely... You lovely incredible hard-working smart piece of shit you know what this you know what i just realized in this moment of like why a part of why that makes me uncomfy when you guys do that is i'm like i feel like it's building me up onto this like p- pedestal or something where it's like oh mm. this is who elena is and and she never makes a mistake and she okay. she's all these perfect things and then i'm like one day i will like i'm Someday I will make a mistake or say something horrifying I look or, forward le- to that or let you guys down. You know, like if I, I'm afraid, like personally, okay, well, if these are the things that they believe about me, what if I let them down in, Elena, in a way? Elena, and- I know you're a human being. Stupid, Do you know, stupid, Elena? Stupid. Do you know that you're a human being? <laughs> anyway, Is let's talk about something else. the perhaps of your own making? Never mind. Let's start with something else. Mac, talk. Do you put yourself on a pedestal? I hold myself to a high standard. Mm -hmm. I hold myself to a low standard. How does that make you feel? (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. I actually have therapy after this. Oh, I have it tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Did you, when you were on your break, did you also break from therapy? No, I never break from therapy. Good for you. you. Um, Updates. How is everybody? I'm feeling really good. I went on my nice long break. Yeah. Um, And what'd you do on that break, Ashley? I went on vacation. And what'd you spend your time doing? Loving my girlfriend. How? By traveling together. And? Doing, oh, having sex. There you go. (laughs) I, so I had so much sex on this trip. Jen and I are very independent people. Yeah. We both travel a lot. um, And we both have really busy schedules. We, she has two jobs. I, hello, my love. Is that her? The yoga mat is 
behind the bed or in the closet. She would be doing yoga while you're podcasting. She That's would. exactly what I imagine. When I think of when we're here and I imagine Jen, she's doing yoga. She's <laughs> stretching. She's doing yoga. She's stretching. She can do a split. Isn't that she's cool? She's drinking like matcha Wait, Yeah, or this is such... I love this lore for the podcast. What are the girlfriends doing while we're oh, potting? That's such a fun question. Yeah, Jen is like drinking matcha. Um, she's reading a book. She's listening yes. to an educational podcast while she's stretching. What is your girlfriend doing, Mac? She's at a coffee she's shop. She's cooking something. Yeah, she's no. actually making a, a an authentic persian meal for yeah, 45 people exactly and Here's the thing. without breaking a sweat yeah i just actually cook more than her oh the internet wouldn't guess this because like the no. mass the mass people don't cook i well, cook no, more she than posts, her i see like cook she does but she cooks it better okay when she cooks it's like like go sit down and just like take it all in because she's yeah. about to put something delicious in my mouth yeah when i cook mm-hmm. it's just kind of like <laughs> here Eat. We've got a, a quantity versus quality issue. I actually think yeah. that applies sexually. <laughs> Absolutely. When when a be- when a powerful femme sits on your face, sit down for dinner, tuck in your napkin, you're about to have something fantastic happen. When a masked person puts it in your face, just just eat. Just no. just eat. <laughs> Here you go. That is lean cuisine. That is that is a TV dinner. It is not. Pre- there's no oh, thought no. in the presentation. There's no oh, thought. No. Just here it is. You want it? I have no comment. I have no comment. Elena, on this what's thread. the girlfriend doing? Oh my! Giving CPR. Honestly, <laughs> like I was trying to think of like some for real. Someone's honestly. dying. Someone She's... is literally about to die. Yeah. She just saved a life and was like, okay, who's next? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. No, really. She, no, that's like, you're kind of joking, but truly she's like saving a life. She's that's, saving a wow. life somewhere. Our partners are so much better than us. <laughs> Climbing down on a rope into the burning building, giving CPR. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Jen and I went on vacation together alone, obviously. Mm-hmm. And we went to Japan. We do not speak Japanese. Um, but we were only around each other for several weeks. You start to get the silly billies after a little bit of time. It's like summer camp. I have never gone on such a long trip solo with just one other person. And, um, I am obsessed with her. I've never (gasps) felt so close to someone in my whole life. I'm obsessed with her this is we, not the direction like, i thought this was going i thought you were going to tell us about all the sex that you were having oh we had Wait, a lot of Elena, sex sh- going like this is cute oh, don't sorry. my my labia sorry. my labia are chafed oh but no no uh, obsessed <laughs> obsessed with her sorry never so felt sorry, so everybody close, wow i can't so believe that elena's releasing the horn and mac just sorry. wants to cuddle sorry. but no 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 i can believe it um <laughs> max will bitch but i i yeah i just like I can't explain it because, like, I've not, it was basically like a honeymoon. You know, we just moved in together. I I didn't say that on the show, but I think we, you said that you were moving in, but you haven't told us how it's going. Oh uh, well, it literally happened the day before we went to Japan, and then okay. we went to Japan. and We got back two days ago. Okay, but it's going great. She she goes to LA for a little while, so for me, in my mind, this is really doesn't feel like she's totally moved in yet because she's going mm-hmm. to LA for two months, um, for acting stuff. But I uh, I, you know, like. It's just, I've never felt so close to someone in my, in my life. And it's almost like we became twins. You know how like twins have their own <laughs> little language? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we were together with no one else for so long, not being yep. able to speak to anybody. And, and so like, we just got so silly and, and I, you know, obviously we had a great relationship before, but I think the thing about Jen is. It was such a slow burn at the beginning. And at the beginning, I had never been in a really, truly healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, I was like, there were parts of me that were like really doubting myself. And like, I I was so drawn to her, but I was also, I was also like, but it's such a slow burn. Every other relationship I've had is so fast. It's so explosive. Yeah. And so parts of me are always like, I know Jen is the one, but I've always been like, I wonder how this will unfold because it has been a slow burn. And how long can something slow burn for? It's new, Mm -hmm. yeah. Forever. Yeah. Like, I feel 
I, at every step, I'm like, wow, I didn't know that I could love somebody more, and then I do. And Have I, you I just heard that song. What song? There's, it's a country song. Oh no. And it's oh, how, what's the t name of it? It's something. No homo. I no, but it's no. I could love someone <laughs> more. No, than it's Mac. You should know. I th oh, I thought I don't know if this is what it's called, but the the kind of line that keeps repeating is, and I thought I loved you then. Uh, oh, it gives me goosebumps. You like, can't it's say it without like, an accent. And I and thought I, I loved, thought you, I loved then. you then. <laughs> and it's literally like he's talking about like oh the first time I met you or I pff, I can't remember. Like, oh, we, we got married, and, like, I thought I loved you then. And then it's like, and we had kids, and I thought I loved you then. Like, basically, mm. talking about exactly that, that, like, it just keeps growing. And you keep yeah. thinking, this is the most I've ever loved somebody. And then you love them more. Oh, my God, it, yeah. it gives me literal goosebumps. I don't know if that would show. I mean, you're so funny. Do you play it on your subwoofer? My subwoofer's out of commission. Still? What? It was killing my car battery. I think we've talked about this. Maybe. Yeah, we have. we have. It was like destroying my car. So I had to unplug it. So now it just sits in the trunk. Yeah. Dead and useless. Taking up space. Is Why this won't you get rid like of a it? metaphor for something bigger? Maybe. Oh, good question. Yeah, maybe I'm in a new chapter. Maybe I'm and in a subwoofer chapter. You're holding chapter. on to something that was draining Woofless. you. And now it's Woofless. just weighing you down. <gasps> With no benefit, oh, but you have I, to, I let, it to let it go. You have to throw that woof out of your car. I have to unhook it. It's attached to everything. It's so wired in there. Um, can I talk about the love of my life, you piece? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Ashley, continue. <laughs> well, Ashley's subwoofer no, still works. You and your love yeah. for your subwoofer far exceeds anything that I could ever have with my girlfriend. <laughs> no, because me and the subwoofer are like, we are on a break. Our, that, maybe you we might like get back you together. That's what happened when we need help. Oh, on a break. <laughs> uh, Danny, just use that for the clickbait, please. Just <laughs> Elena wiping a tear saying we were on a break. We're on a break. We're on a break. Yeah, please use that. Thank you. Click, clickbait, clickbait. We're on a break. Yeah, please put that at the beginning of the. That is the intro, please. The shortest this is me intro of all time. For thumbnails. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I feel really good and I feel really connected to her, and um, I'm very very happy, and I'm really lucky to have her. Yeah. I'm very lucky to have her. It is the yeah, only thing can. that matters. That's true. That's true. The people you have in your life, like the people around you, that's what matters. It's true. I'm glad you well, had that, that was break. Really sweet and also cute. It was and I, yeah, and I felt like sort of cleansed. Yeah. Um, and no, I got to save the the chronic pain talk for the CPT for another episode. But I'm okay. doing very well. The best way to learn a language is through immersion, living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everyone. So what's the second best way to learn a language? Babbel. Because with Babbel, you can start speaking a new language in just three weeks. This summer, you can start speaking a new language with Babbel. Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations and delivered with conversation based teaching. When I was learning a language in school, I was really, really not good at it and I found it embarrassing. And with Babbel, I'm learning conversation based skills in the privacy of my home, getting confident and then being able to use those skills outside because I actually know how to say really useful stuff so it's been great here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now get 55 percent off your Babbel subscription but only for our listeners at babble.com slash chosen get 55 percent off at babble.com slash chosen spelled b-a-b-b-e-l dot com slash chosen rules and restrictions may apply um okay any updates from you guys um i was in manitoba with my family hanging out and my dad did the most my dad thing uh that he could possibly do Save and the world he's he ran faster than a speeding bullet 
No. Maybe he like turned the rotation of the planet into the he, opposite direction to reverse time. Perhaps he left maybe? over a building. <laughs> he avoided in a single night. bound. With everything in him. No, he created a mini Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in your family. <laughs> All of my parents' friends, so we were at the lake, right? And there's a bunch of friends that, like, have cabins on the lake, and they all have docks. And so he created, like, a dock Olympics and made us all... Not made us dock all. Olympics. We all happily prepared. Or, Olymp like, docks. happily participated. The Olymp docks. <laughs> and he put us all in teams, and he... He had all these games set up, a whole point system, a flag, everything. And we basically spent the weekend, like, helping him revise these games. Like, he, he, it's the funniest thing. He's what like, country did you represent? Lauren? No, we didn't do, like, countries. We just were teams. But What team did you represent? Blues Clues. We never lose. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to live my dream? <laughs> Come to Canada, Mac. You can be a part of it. Get a fucking passport. Yes. You've done that now, right? Mac. You've submitted that right by now. Mac. Mac. So the Are you kidding? In my defense. Never mind. Are you no kidding? Defense. There's no defense. Still? You were doing them. We saw Boo. you. Okay, we saw you doing them. <laughs> Boo. I'm so Where's sorry. Where's the sign, Mac? Your Where's the sign? The papers are in my weeks. backpack. The papers are in my backpack. I just you shouldn't haven't... have dropped out of college. I'm in shock right now. Mac, did you make the signs for us? I don't even know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you right Our now. Our son needs to learn about follow through. Listener, I'm to... so sorry. So. What are we don't need apologies. We need discipline and we need deadlines. Action. We need we to need see. Action. We need to see the change. You've apologized on every episode for the past six months. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's a normal noise to make when you stretch. That's a normal stretch noise. What I do? Well, you did a normal like <clears throat> kind of stretch sound. Max? What did Mac do? Oh, oh. I don't feel like that is an did. accurate representation. That's what you did. Danny, replay from last week. <laughs> Danny, Instant don't replay, do that. please. Instant Danny, replay, you don't need Danny, that extra work. Week. Don't, I can't don't overwork be... yourself, Danny. Don't you want that when you're watching reality TV? Yep, when you're yeah. watching reality TV, you want to be able to be like, excuse me. No. No, my the favorite thing, replay. when yes. they expose, yes. when the producers expose people, like, they'll be like, oh, I never said that. And then they, like, literally play Love the Island. moment that they said that. Love yes. Island. So good. That's what so you're doing. Good. That's what you're it's doing It's hilarious. Right now. Also, isn't it so funny how the human experience, we just don't remember anything? <laughs> we don't remember <laughs> shit. <laughs> Does gaslighting exist, or do human beings just not remember anything ever? No, I actually, I... I, let's discuss this. Actually? Actually? I, first of all, if I hear one more person call another person a narcissist, <laughs> 1% of the population is a narcissist. Where are all these narcissists coming from, guys? <laughs> yeah. He's a narcissist. I hear it on the streets of New York. She's a narcissist. I'm like, no, no, you're a narcissist. Just a poor communicator. Just a, yes, thank Just you, a Jesus poor Christ. Communicator. Not everyone who wrongs you. Is it is, is some sort of has some sort of pathology that they need to be? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes life is just hard, and we run into difficult people. Okay, mm -hmm. my God. Okay. Second what, of all, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, I don't know. Second of all, <laughs> mm, second of all, where? Mm, I can't what? remember. Oh, I'm going on a dad rant. Okay, Danny, instant replay. What? Did, what yeah, can't well, Danny, remember? <laughs> instant replay what am i talking about oh gaslighting i genuinely believe there are some evil people out there that know what they're doing mm -hmm. but i think so much of perceived gaslighting is just two people who either disagree or misremember or are approaching something differently and they don't realize that they're like you remember oh, that yeah. scene where 
um, Katie Thurston and her boyfriend from The Bachelor that they broke up, they were they just on air were accusing each other of gaslighting each other about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think you guys were just both emotional and and talking past each other. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. No, yeah. I, don't know. I think there is yeah. there. I would say there's a very small subsect of people that would actually be gaslighting intentionally yeah yeah but it is a very easy place i think for a lot of people to go when they're trying to defend their position Mm -hmm. and like aren't in a place to listen it's a lot easier to just say it didn't happen like that and like to to try and position your um perspective as like the only true one when Mm. it's like two people can experience the same moment very differently totally totally i don't know just that's just something i think about a lot when i you know because right now people are talking a lot about like therapized language exactly yeah yeah and it's like well let's be careful with these terms because like to call someone a gaslighter is has a certain connotation yeah it's intense and it takes the it also takes the intensity away from like people who actually are narcissists or people who are actually gaslighting someone intentionally you kind of take the you take that language away from the people who are are actually victims Mm. of these things yeah 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 oh wow yeah (laughs) nugget (laughs) if whenever mac makes that face i'm like okay something landed oh yeah should we do a question did wait did we all do updates mac do you have any updates i'm in max florida what are you doing in Florida and not LA? Can you talk about this? Because yeah, I've been meaning to ask you this. No, it's actually super stressful yeah. and really stressful. <laughs> yeah, I can talk about it. Yeah, I can talk about it. Yeah, oh, I can talk about it. Yeah. Um, so essentially... <laughs> yes! I'm going to say Yay. this super fast because I don't want it talk to be long. Talk about it! Why Ready? don't you want it to be long? No, Because it doesn't to need to be long. Fast. This Why can not? be a very you have, functional... You've said three words this whole episode. Well, Elena, you have to go. Yeah, like oh, that's true. <laughs> I'll that's just, true. I'll just, but I want to listen. Speed round this and get through it. Sure. So, okay. Basically, me and my partner were looking for an apartment in Los Angeles, in the Valley of Los Angeles. Not an easy thing to do, as I'm sure many people understand or have experienced. Not an easy thing to do. We were looking for a really long time. We had a real estate agent helping us. Couldn't find one. Finally found one. It's a new building, which is nice for some yeah. reasons because we're mm-hmm. like we don't have to worry about like mold and stuff like that, and like obviously mm-hmm. the condition will. Probably I love that be mold nicer. is where you go rather than like a dishwasher. Yeah, I was gonna say like uh, that's what my first thought was like. <laughs> oh, nice appliances. appliances. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like the mold. Right. Okay, but Max, you know like about 20. the mold. Max, you know about yeah. the mold in the driest place in America. Yeah, you know all the mold. <laughs> that's it's oh, right that's there really with the megalodons. That's really. Mold if you mean that megalodons are as real as mold, then yes, I agree with you. Mac Elena. likes megalodons. Mac doesn't like mold. Also, I would like to say I don't respond to everyone, but I see all of you sending me the article about the new megalodon tooth they just found, and I appreciate you. I see you. I haven't responded to everyone, but I appreciate you guys because there are a lot of you. Anyway, we're like, okay, this is the apartment. We really want it. It's in our budget. It's everything that we wanted in an apartment. We can't pass this up. We've been looking for months. Mm -hmm. So we get the apartment. We have like a holding fee down on it, blah, blah, blah. But it's a new building. So the only thing was he was like, the move in date might need to be a little bit flexible because we like are finishing construction and we have to wait to get these permits back from the city, blah, blah, blah. We're like, okay, I don't really need to get into all that. But basically the move in date has been pushed to the middle of September. Not good because my lease was up August 1st. Um... So we're like have this awkward month where we don't have anything, anywhere to like live, anywhere to be. My girlfriend's already out with me. We're like, we could, because if you, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you get like a long-term Airbnb, it's cheaper. It's not like the nightly price. Like it's, yeah, it's probably what I did like, when I was from what UK. I discovered, it was yeah. one of the better options that we had. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I just need to find a place that's not super expensive. We were looking at North Carolina because I have some family that lives out there. And I was like, this is a good excuse to see some family. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to be by a beach and my older sister lives in Florida in st petersburg and she was like well what about like what about down here we found a place for really cheap her and her boyfriend and we were like okay well look and we found a place that was like perfect it was cheaper than our rent is 
and all this stuff so we ended up coming down here like a week and a half ago because now i get to see my sister because i never get to see her anymore so it's like i'm and st really pete's is really uh gay yeah it is oh and is it <laughs> yeah a lot, oh it's so gay there's like rainbow painted on the ground i'm yeah. like oh my god this is one of the most queer friendly places i've ever been it's so nice like in people, florida of all places in florida of all which is the other funny thing people keep dming me and they're like just be care like nicely dming me they're like be yeah. careful like they're worried i love that. i, I was concerned like that. when, I, when you said missouri florida, i, I guess am maybe from springfield missouri i like yeah, i don't but know where we you don't hear news we don't hear news about missouri we hear news about florida florida but scares you hear, me as but missouri is the worst Canada. state for it to be trans right now the yeah, most right. trans legislation is in missouri like obviously you guys are being nice checking in on me like be careful in florida the community from what from my experience here in st petersburg for the week and a half i've been here mm -hmm. the community here does not represent the political things going on in florida and that fucking sucks it's actually really important to remember because a lot of us are drowning in the news it's really important to remember that that those headlines the people in power it doesn't actually reflect yes the the people in the street i'm kind of like i'm like damn reflect. are y'all voting like it is yeah. have y'all been to the polls <laughs> it is crazy that like look the the vast majority of people are not homophobic like yeah. It, it's it this whole thing is because a few people are really pushing the envelope as far as and they and a lot of them do have power or links to power and that's why this mm -hmm. is happening but like you're right elena like a lot of this is this weird competitive news cycle between mm -hmm. the liberal media and the right-wing media trying to out media each other and to get us to be scared to mm -hmm. keep watching it's just like anything on TikTok. it's it's, it's sen sensationalism and a lot of it is true there is book banning and there are like there's legislation out to hurt trans people and yada yada but the the reality is somewhere between these things where scary things are happening but also real life is happening people are okay and we need to go out and vote <laughs> well that's exactly i like the takeaway for me is like we have to remember and not lose sight of the fact that there while there is so much power in the select few that like are in power, there's also so much power in our majority. Yes. And the fact that there is a majority of people who do not support these things. Yes. And so mm -hmm. we need to vote, we need to be loud, we need to come yeah. together. How do you how do you take people reasonable how do you make reasonableness viral? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 so hard to be like reasonable. Yeah. and make that a I, I uh hey <laughs> i had a nuanced conversation the other day it was boring and calm and we made a lot of progress it's so hard to like make a yeah. clip like that go viral yeah. because it's it, yeah it's not healthy to just freaking be yeah. all the way out here well i'm glad you're having a nice time come down Florida. here for the legislation <laughs> we came down here so i could have some time with my sister that i never see so i'm like I go to Florida for the legislation. <laughs> I like to read it. I, I like to read it. Enact it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Pass like to it. Be there, veto it. See it. Should we answer a but, question? Yeah, yes, let's do we it. Should. Oh, did I cut you off, Mac? I'm sorry. No. All right. I like your Henley. It's more of a, a, a sweater, if I'm being honest. I can't, it's well, pretty, we can't it's really see knit. you. Oh. Well, you guys must miss me. We do miss you, Mac. <laughs> hmm. Do you think all trauma stems from your parents or some external massive thing? Because personally, while I've had the normal issues with my parents, after growing up a bit, I kind of see where they were coming from a lot of the time, but the issues are already there now. I feel bad blaming them because being in their positions, there's no massive changes that they could have made to really do much better. It was all a bit unfairly easier when everything was their fault. I don't know quite how to feel about it anymore now that I can see their side of things in so many situations. So essentially asking, how do you hold understanding and empathy for your parents and where they were yes. coming from and why they made the choices that they did, why they behaved the way they did, and also recognize that you that there's an impact of that that you still carry it's like yeah. i think the question is kind of how Dude, do you that translation 
Uh, well, you should submit this to get into <laughs> your thesis thing. Well, that's like kind of the challenge of life, what what this question is. Thanks, Mac. This question yeah. is a massive piece of becoming an adult where you have to look at your circumstances, parents, your brain chemistry, mm-hmm. something horrible that happened to you, whatever, and you have to accept that you cannot change it. You, mm-hmm. It's done. It happened or it is the way that it is. This is your life. And do you let that be your identity or do you accept it as a part of your story and make the changes to live your healthiest life? Mm -hmm. That is the challenge of, of life. That's Mm -hmm. wow. I got to make those signs. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and of like recognizing that you can, understand the role that your parents played in your trauma and and you can it's not it's not I get, it's not about holding them responsible necessarily because it sounds like what you're saying is that <laughs> kind of holding them responsible or or like blaming them doesn't feel good for you it doesn't feel like it's serving you it sounds like you're not looking for anything from them necessarily and that's okay, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that your upbringing didn't have an impact, and both those things can be true. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, and it may help you. Oh, sorry, Elena. I'm sorry. We. It's okay. We we feel a level of a lot of us feel a level of of protectiveness. Pro, what's the word? Not protectiveness. Like, we feel a level of loyalty and a level of not wanting to blame our parents or like feeling like by acknowledging the impact that they've had we're somehow i don't know somehow like creating a villain well not just that but there's a little baby inside of you that in through the act of blaming your parents for lack of better terms Mm -hmm. i I, this speaks to me so much because i only had one parent growing Mm -hmm. up and to look at your only parent and acknowledge them as a flawed person Mm -hmm. is so against the survival mechanism that we all have inside of us. We don't want to do that. You Mm -hmm. cannot be 10, look at your parent and go, they don't have the capabilities to raise me in a trauma-free environment. First of all, we don't have that kind of maturity. But second of all, it is like a biological threat to our existence. We can't, it's too big for us to acknowledge. So I think what's, what can be really challenging is to allow yourself to acknowledge the faults of this person mm-hmm. because it's just really hard because you, you are always going to want your parents to, at least for me, you are always going to wish Sorry, I'm going really deep right now. I'm going really vulnerable. But something that I explored in therapy, in some ways, the death of my father is almost easier to stomach because he's he's dead. He's gone. Mm-hmm. I will never have him back. I understand that. But the death of the relationship that I could have had with my mother re- is replayed and lives again and again and again as something that I have to accept every day. Mm-hmm. That I cannot have this type of mother-daughter relationship that I wish that I could have. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's a big big old bitter pill that you have to swallow every day it's not something that you just get over and you can you can work on swallowing that pill while while still loving your parent loving your parents with the same fullness like we have to the the challenge and i think the question is like how I guess it's it's knowing or learning that you can acknowledge that pill, acknowledge the hurt, acknowledge where you're at now, while still being like, and my parent is human, and I love them, and I'm not out for blood here. It's, yeah, yeah. But it's tough. That's and tough. it'll it'll I I do think it helps to accept some of your life mm. by knowing that they tried. Hmm. I think this is another therapized language thing. I was thinking about this the other day, Elena. Tell me what you think of this. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people are like, it's not the intent that matters. It's how you made them feel. Intent doesn't matter. Yeah. Intent, intent versus, versus impact. impact. Yes. I think that's really only true about the feelings and the, the harm that the person has received. Because I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Of course, you never want to hurt someone. But if my girlfriend hurts my feelings, the intent of it does matter to me. Because was she maliciously trying to hurt my feelings or did we have a miscommunication and there was an act? Of course, right. the feelings are the feelings. Yeah. It's there. There's no way to change that, really. But in the justice system, there's a difference between premeditated murder and manslaughter. Yeah. And yeah. I, do, I do actually think that if you can acknowledge that your parents were flawed people and trying their best, it actually can help you move on. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying, yeah, Elena? Yeah, I do. Like, I do. But I think not. it's not like... You can copy and paste that to everything. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, I think this is one of those cases where understanding the person's point of view really might help you metabolize what happened to you. Yeah, and I think that the intent versus impact piece is less, f is less written or, like, less talked about for the person who's been hurt and more for the person who's done the hurting. To understand the hurting. Yeah, like, I think it's yeah. more saying... Because I think that the this the intent versus impact piece, I think, is a response to defensiveness. It's like a mm. when someone comes to you and says you've hurt me, there's it's there's a an instinct to explain and say, well, my yes. intent was this. And if you if you jump right to that, it's defensiveness versus hearing and and metabolizing understanding the hurt that you've caused, there's a place for intent. There, I, there absolutely is, but that I think has to come after impact. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. But you're saying from the other side, understanding intent can be healing. And I agree. Yes. I yes. absolutely agree. Yeah. I, I don't have the answer to how do you hold both of those things? Like how do you hold that's, I mean, intent versus Sounds impact like is kind of a perfect way to describe this. Is like, how do you hold intent and impact when it comes to your parents? Yeah. Ooh. I think they're doing it. I think this person is doing yeah. it. Yeah. It sounds like they're working through that process. Yeah. Maybe they need permission. Maybe, maybe listener, you're, you're looking for some permission that, like, you can hold both of those things and that's okay. Yeah. Mac, Mac, do you have any, any thoughts? <laughs> Son? Son? This might be one of those times where I just listen. <laughs> I don't know. I've talked about, like, my family stuff before. Like, with my dad, I just, like, accept the love that he has for me without, like, crossing boundaries that I've set up for myself. So, that, I mean, like... That's tough. That but takes... sometimes, it, I don't know. Sometimes it's, like, more difficult than others that, like as I grow and like learn more and process more about like childhood and like remember things, it's like sometimes you don't always want to, sometimes the boundaries change and it like you mm. cut them off a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I like had some experiences where like while my girlfriend was in town, I kind of like gave him chances mm. of like, you know, mm -hmm. let's try this. Let's kind of see, like, let's do a breakfast. Let's do a blah, blah, blah. Let's, come over to the house for father's day yeah and just every time it was like it seemed like it was fine and then it was just like pfft, mm. totally back to square one like no impact like nothing has changed everything's the same and then it's just kind of like i guess things aren't different and i gotta keep those boundaries set up and i can still like i can still see him and recognize that like the way he thinks is because he cares about me like it's not coming from a place of malice on his side which i know is like controversial for a lot of people because they like want people no, to accept he, that they're you know what i mean like yeah he's not he's not telling me like this is wrong don't be gay and like he's saying that because he loves me and he thinks he's protecting me it's mm -hmm. not right <laughs> but no. that's his perspective of it and I just don't, I just don't think that's going to change, but that's okay. He literally thinks you're going to burn in hell. Like, can you imagine believing in hell yeah. and the urgency, yeah. the urgency that your kid, you don't want your kid to burn in hell. Yeah. Like that is a big, 
That's a big thing to unwrite for somebody. Yeah. 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 It's it's well, sad. And Mac, I think you've just given the perfect example of holding intent and impact. Mm -hmm. That's that's the perfect example. Like you're yeah. saying, first of all, it takes a lot of mm, maturity, reflection, uh, individualization, sense of self. It takes a lot to be able to look at your dad and to see his intent and even hold that in any way uh, up against the impact. So like mm -hmm. right there, wow. And like, Mac as your dad. Sorry, I just thought the bit would be funnier. I really thought I was going to get more of a laugh on that. I don't know. Oh, I was waiting to hear oh, what you were going to say. I thought it, you were going to say not, It's not a fully developed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like waiting. I was like, okay, as your dad, what do like, you want to oh, say? I just, I say? feel, I feel as a comedian, I, I have to insert a little comedy in um, when we reach moments it like this. Sitch. Yeah. yeah. In it, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, for lack of a better term, it's shitty sitch. What I was going to say, Mac, is um, as your gay father... If you post one more thing about that Smallville guy, I'm going to kick you out of the house. <laughs> I love him. I Stop fucking it. love Tom Welling. And our intent is malicious. In it's it's a totally Can malicious. Can I also just say really quick to the person that asked the question, this feels like shit. Like it yeah. literally, it feels so uncomfortable and icky. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's not very many situations in my life where I look at it and I, I get uncomfortable but this situation oh. is so like Sorry. is there a ghost what the was that? vulnerability on both sides is so uncomfortable because like did something happen <laughs> no i literally bumped my elbow on the camera that i have back here and i thought i was gonna knock it over but i didn't and it got a little more dramatic than i <laughs> it got a little more dramatic than i intended it to <laughs> you're just sitting we're just sitting listening i just yeah like did I, did I harm you through my drama? Did Maybe. I harm you? <laughs> I did not have that's sex my, with that's... that woman. We got, we got a country <laughs> sitch. And I thought I loved you then. Sorry. It was the ghost of my past. Oh, we're off the rails. As usual. Anyways. As usual. No, it's uncomfortable. Mac, I think that was it's really right. I'm glad it's that so you did that. It's so easy for us Listen. to just say this. It's yes. so easy for us to just say this because it actively blows in mm -hmm. the moment. It actively is heartbreaking and awful. And it's a here's the thing about this kind of stuff is you don't find the balance of those things and then just you're like, "Oh, I'm done. I found yeah. the balance of those things." Yeah. You're finding like you just said, Mac, you're finding it with every interaction that you have with your parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. That's what therapy is for. That's why you have to be in therapy forever. Because mm -hmm. every week you're like, I went through that thing again. Yeah. And it, and it gets easier every time. And there are ways to make those interactions easier. But it will literally, and this is where I think the acceptance is like so key. It's like, you know, with accepting in my own life, like, oh, that's, that's not going away. And I think when we're so attached to our trauma or whatever the thing has happened to us, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like it's going to be there forever and you have to let go of it at the same time. And you have to, every single time it comes around, you have to acknowledge it and then let, let go of it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a whole, it's a, it's horrible, but that's, that's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just <laughs> please stop, please. No, no, everything's totally. No. <laughs> the listeners are gonna be like, "What's happening?" You have to watch <laughs> you on have YouTube. To watch. This is good. We do physical comedy bits on the podcast. It makes perfect sense. Patreon.com uh, <laughs> slash chosen family podcast for bonus episodes and to get your questions answered on priority. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much to those of you who are already over there. We also do full bonus episodes. 
Like full bonus episodes. Like a full episode. More. Didn't I fucking say that, bitch? Oh, did you? Sorry, I was distracted. Sorry. Whenever, <laughs> whenever, whenever I do a bit like that and Elena responds sincerely, I'm like, fuck me, fuck me, fuck no, I didn't, me. No, I wasn't trying to respond sincerely. I was distracted by my fidgety, I just, fidgety I just, fingers. I just respond sincerely because I'm a glorious human being who can do no wrong because I live on a pet. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. We love you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Chosen Family is a Forever Dog production, hosted by Ashley Gavin, Elena Joy, and Mac Injamy. Edited by Danny Jewell, executive produced by Mariah Nicholas. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm. Forever Dog.